So we saw the challenge. We heard from a, a lot of people that this whole tokenization of assets is going to be very important. Janko, can you come up, come up on stage? Uh, on stage? Um, yesterday, um, I talked to Petra. And Petra is the head of uh, payment, uh, payment services at Money2020. She was last year, she was actually in uh, the day of the crypto talking about what does uh, crypto actually mean? What, 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 how will they uh, govern it? How will they uh, regulate it? And, uh, but she couldn't be here. She is uh, also Janko. I talked to her with Janko. And Janko and I had an interesting conversation because Janko, you, were, um, you, you work for the Dutch Central Bank, but you also you were the chairman of a European, uh, of a European group. What was, uh, what was that? Global even, so Richard yeah. is probably happy. Uh, yeah. yeah, so we, uh, but it's more on the banking supervisory side, but uh, all the regulators are watching this and looking at this yeah. uh, and trying to figure out what they want to do. Yeah, <laughs> so you just came out <laughs> with, uh, it's a, there's an English version of that, Vision on Payments, it's yeah. uh, online, but uh, you gave me the Dutch version. So that is the vision of the Dutch Central Bank on payment system, on crypto, on, 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 on blockchain and where it's going. And can you tell us uh, what role do you think, uh, do you, you, uh, how do you view this whole crypto and this blockchain thing and what is your role on regulation, what is your vision on regulation? Yeah, so this is coming from the central bank and as a central bank we are operator of the wholesale systems uh, but we're also overseer, so we have a dual role. But we're also the, the supervisor. This is coming from the central bank. And what we're seeing is the payment the industry is changing rapidly. We're seeing more and more external parties entering systems. They want to, to add uh, access to their wholesale system uh, that we're governing. Uh, and this confronts us with what do we want to do with all these questions, have a more coherent story to the outside world and also discuss it with, uh, with you uh, what our key points are. And uh, actually three, we want to focus on robustness in the chain. You see more and more of new parties entering and with cyber resilience you always have the weakest spot in the chain. Robustness? The or robustness, of, robustness. The, of the chain of the payment uh, yeah. service. And we also want to have a, a cash, uh, 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 less cash society, but not a cashless society. Uh, so we see a decline in the use of cash. Uh, but then again when you, when you learn about what is happening in Sweden, they are uh, a couple of years ahead and now they're trying to figure out how they can stop this trend because cash is actually important. You have this failure in the UK, which is public, about uh, the Visa uh, network. And at that point, people return to cash. So we do want to keep cash uh, in as a, as a backup. And the third one is um, we want to focus on innovation. That's what this is all about. Yeah. So we published a blockchain uh, uh, bulletin. So it's a short uh, paper on uh, what our experience is with blockchain and we did experimentations more than uh, one day with uh, two people and, uh, and some beer cans. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it for three years actually um, and, and uh, we did many prototypes and we learned uh, actually what some of the previous speakers told us. Uh, what problem are we trying to solve? Um, they have a fantastic system in Holland. Yeah, we have in a good Europe, system actually, in, in Europe. Europe, Europe, and the Euro system is introducing instant payments per November this year. Uh, it will be available, uh, but, the, but the payment association knows much better, but it will be available for all consumers here um, next year. Yeah, payments uh, in five seconds. Between banks, eh? Between because banks, yeah, so now what you have now inside uh. your bank, you now get it in, uh, you get it. And they even have that they now check the account name and the account number. So yeah. that is really amazing. It's what an Bank, innovation. Uh, innovation. It's really good innovation. <laughs> but why not 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. So we are not paid to be ahead of the curve, right? So we are the regulator of the banks. The banks need to uh, be in front of this innovation curve. It's, yeah. it's necessary. Okay, but that, let's talk we about the, the problem. You say, what B Bart said, what problem is it solving? You don't see it or yeah. you... Um, you think it's all hunky-dory with the financial system and we don't need any more uh, disruptive no, innovation. So, so we do see uh, potential in settlement efficiency, for example, in cross-border remittances. There was an interesting piece today in the Financial Times about uh, the battle between Ripple and, and Swift. Um, so Ripple is the challenger and Swift is the incumbent institution. You'll see this more and more because there is some inefficiency there. Uh, everybody agrees on that. It takes too much time to send your euros to uh, Zlotys in, in Poland, uh, mm -hmm. or UK dollars, uh, UK pounds to Zlotys. Um, so institutions are working on this and they are applying technologies such as these. Um, so it can be an, a possible solution, but it's still early days. 
Yeah, but I mean, if you, for example, say, let's make an intelligent coin. We make a healthcare coin. Yeah. The healthcare coin uh, has certain characteristics in it that it can only be paid to a uh, healthcare provider if the money is approved <coughs> by the contract or by, by the healthcare, by the insurance company, by this, by that. And that's why, because there's a lot of security built into its smart money, you can make a system which is way simpler and it's not so easy to steal the money. So you have to be less protective about it. That's basically what, yeah. what he's trying to do. And so that, that there's optimized intelligent money instead of you know, the powerful euro, which is everywhere and you can do everything about it. You have to test if a terrorist is, uh, is, is using it or if somebody's whitewashing it all the time. Yeah, so two remarks. Um, first, I was talking about payments. Uh, and there you have also millions and millions of transactions uh, uh, on, on, on an annual basis in the hundreds of millions, even the yes. retail. Yeah. So it's, it's in terms of scalability that you cannot achieve with the truly decentralized ledgers. Or oh, you think there's not going to be blockchains which can do a it million transactions a second? It will be. Uh, we were investigating it, but the current technology, we're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of our main points. And the other point is that anonymity is, of course, one of the key uh, points here and, and um, uh, there's pseudo anonymity with the bitcoins and uh, the altcoins but there are now also double anonymous uh, privacy coins um, that's your concern and uh, we have concerns and not only we uh, so the European Commission uh, issued a new uh, anti-money laundering directive it has been adopted now and it will be pub published in the uh, EU journal uh, so it will be implemented and it will also be implemented in the Netherlands and we will have crypto exchanges and wallet providers under the remit of this directive. Yeah. But it will be quite challenging to see who's actually behind all these transactions because at some point uh, you cannot follow the trace. So many smart people are thinking about what do we want to do with this, with this yeah, pseudo anonymity yeah. and do we really trust where these tokens are coming yeah. from? Every money. If, if, it, if it's legal, it needs to be tracked and traced from uh, to the origin. Yeah. And otherwise, it cannot exist. It can what about exist. cash? Are you going to le leave cash around, or uh, the, the cash is, of course, now the the, <laughs> the typical uh, use use uh, use use medium for this. Uh -huh. uh, but cash is quite uh, cumbersome to ship, uh, so it, there are some inefficiencies there, uh, which don't allow the people who are not no benevolent like all of us yeah. uh, to send it around all the world. Okay. What are you going to do? I mean, you normally have said, uh, we don't regulate crypto. It's not money, we don't yeah. regulate it. But there is, the, if I go to a bank, I mean, I have a little mining operation, okay? I have miners, so yeah. they mine Bitcoin or Litecoin. And what we did is we took those uh, 60 miners and we brought them at a uh, uh, tomato, qu to tomato um, uh, grower because they make their own electricity. <coughs> And they make electricity, we put it in mine, and we get, mi we get light, light coin. And what happens to the heat? The heat goes into the uh, greenhouses, and uh, so it's 100%. Uh, mm -hmm. It's 100%. We just have, instead of making heat with, uh, heat with uh, gasoline uh, things, we, we make it with electricity, and it's 100%. It's called green mine. We tried to get a bank account from B Bunk, because Bunk uh, you know, was the only one who did basically works with crypto. They said, oh, no, we cannot guarantee that you're not whitewashing or that you're not mm. doing terrorist sponsoring. You're not getting a bank account. ABN Embro is the same. ING the same. And if I ask them why, I go to the product owner, and I mean, I can call them, you know, like he can call the CIO of, uh, of Blue Cross or everything. I can call them and say, why don't you do that? I say, we're going to get <coughs> fined so big it's not worth our while, and it's because of the Dutch Central Bank. Because you don't say you cannot allow to do it. You just say, well, you need to be sure that you can answer all our questions. And that is enough to basically mm. shut the whole thing down. Yeah. You make it impossible for real companies. I'm a real company. I, I'm not terrorist sponsoring. I'm not. Now I have to. I'm just taking an, a separate account from Knopp and, uh, and, 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 and just, you know, I, 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 under a different name. And I, I have to go underground and be dishonest about it, even though I want to be honest. Yeah. Is that what you want? Are you going to give me a regulation so that I can do, I can be honest and, 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 and still function? Interesting question. I think, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, it's not what we want, that you go underground and do illegal things with your bank. That's definitely I don't not do what illegal going to, uh, things. Yeah. <laughs> um, and actually, if, if they see you uh, <laughs> monetizing your, your cryptos freshly mined into euros, they will probably ask questions because they do that. Um, what the point is that we lay the responsibility with the bank. So if the bank says we cannot really uh, 
uh, identify you and see where these coins are coming from, these tokens, uh, then they are actually exposed to uh, money laundering or t terrorist financing. Yes. So it's it's for so them. It's uh, a quite um, a very heavy weapon, right? I mean, yeah. it's a very heavy weapon, and you don't give me a way out. Yeah. So what a way out could be, you're also looking ahead, is that we are trying to get sensible ways and not not steering innovation, but sensible ways of having this anonymity, uh, not for regulators, for maybe trusted parties like banks. We need to get better insights into who are behind these companies, these coins. You have companies now who are uh, specializing in tracking chains and check tracking and seeing which parties are behind them. Um, and I think this will be the, the future. And at some point, your company may be uh, able to get a bank account, but I it's not, no, not on us, right? There are yeah bankers yeah, but here. But the so way your eyebrow brow moves when you have a talk in the room yeah. and they say, hey, can we do business with crypto companies? When we did yeah. do good KYC, the respectable uh, entrepreneurs, they're all having a good reputation. Can they, uh, can they get a bank account? Yeah. And then you raise your eyebrow. You know, it's just very subtle. Yeah. It's not a rule which says, Thou shall not have a bank account. You know, no. it will not, it, it's not there. Because you say, we cannot regulate it. It's not, it's not money. No. <laughs> so anyway. Um, Sorry, not helping you. <laughs> yeah. So if you then, if you then look at uh, the influence of blockchain, let's make it a more simple yeah. uh, thing. Okay? Yeah. We have a blockchain that's uh, basically, and there's all these new systems coming up, Ripple versus, uh, versus Swift. How do you see that going? And how do you see that in your, uh, in your friends all around Europe? Because you have a very good insight, even global, how the banks are looking at uh, that. They have all the old systems and they need to modernize. Will they use blockchain for it? What's the interest in there? Yeah, so in, in Canada, in, in uh, the ECB, uh, in, in Singapore, there are many open uh, projects. You can read all about it if you're interested. They publish their, uh, their results. And they are, um, are, are, are progressing, but the key takeaway from them is what I told you, that this is not going to replace wholesale payment systems uh, in the years to come. Uh, there are interesting aspects in the terms of uh, um, being resilient to cyber criminals because of their decentralized nature. Uh, it doesn't help you attacking one node because the whole system will keep it stable. Um, but in terms of performance, in terms of efficiency and uh, finality of, of trades, um, they are not there yet. Um, Monday and Tuesday we were uh, in Basel, which is like the, the small uh, mountain village which is governing uh, world finance. It's quite interesting. Uh, and there we were talking about uh, wholesale uh, solutions. And this is very early days in research. Um, but there are companies um, looking at whether you need some sort of uh, settlement coin. Um, central banks have published, the report was mentioned by Dave Birch, mm -hmm. they've published the Central Bank Digital Currency Report, and the thinking is ongoing, and perhaps we can deliver better outcomes for cross-border payments, for cert certain settlements in securities. I think this will be the way forward in the years to come. Longer than that, probably as you say, there will be blockchain innovations, and I will be standing here, um, this is... Uh, s yeah, uh, so let's, let's say, different. I mean, they were talking about tokenizing everything. Yeah. Right? Trillions, hundreds of trillions of dollars. That's real big money. So I have a question about that. What, what, how fast do you think that will go? And who has, to, uh, who has to basically be the regulator to do that? And is it going to be Europe? Is it going to be I every country? Is the country state still yeah. going to be the center of the world? So the governing body on a, on a global level is the G20. Um, and they uh, are going to meet again in July, but they're very uh, uh, easy about uh, proposing regulatory initiatives because many countries are already moving. And it's easy? An e they, they, they don't want to move. No, they uh, don't want to move too quickly. So uh -huh, they want yeah. to know first what's going on. And we are actually also doing this. Um, and I think what the best we can do is establish something on the European level. So this is more the authority for the financial markets and the uh, European uh, Securities uh, Authority. Um, so we will uh, work with them in seeing whether such regulation is beneficial. I think the, the Swiss example, which was mentioned, is very, uh, very interesting. Yeah. Um, also in France, You talk to them, uh, yeah. are they really yeah. ahead? Are they the, uh, and is everybody looking at them no saying, oh? They're ahead in terms of communication uh, and in terms of um, signaling this. Uh, there's also uh, some aspects in that, but 
uh, there is some sense is in what they say. If it's a, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. It's probably a duck. If it's looked like a security, yeah. Well, then we should regulate this. Next security. year, when you're back here, what will what 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 has changed in regulation <coughs> in this whole uh, in this whole world? Yeah, there will be definitely r more certainty on on what Europe will be doing because ESMA is going to advise. Uh, will it be soon. much more tougher to do ICOs and much more tougher to to basically buy and sell uh, tokens for 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 companies or people? It won't be tougher for, for good entrepreneurs who are thinking about their business model or are eager to show what they're doing and being transparent and having talks. It'd be even easier because you don't have to do these hundred talks. You're slightly regulated in a sense probably and then you will be able to signal that. Uh, it will be tougher for the scams. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very yeah. much. You're welcome. Good luck. <laughs>